Good morning and welcome to chapel. I'm so glad you're here today. As we come in and are starting to get settled, let's just go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Calm our hearts and quiet our hearts here before the Lord. If you would pray with me. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day, this day that you have made. What a gift it is. Pray that we would uh, make the most of it. Lord, I just thank you for this break that we're just coming back from and the rest, the rejuvenation we have to be able to finish this semester strong. Pray that we would finish strong in the classroom, we would finish strong in our activities. I also pray that, you, Lord, we would just not forget to finish the semester strong in our relationship with you and our spiritual walk, that we would chase after you wholeheartedly to the end. Not just the end of the semester, but, but as we look forward, Lord, I pray that you would help us to, to continue to pursue you wholeheartedly. We thank you for this time. Pray that you would just bless us through our, our speaker today. Pray that you would just continue to draw our hearts closer to yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, many of you may notice, well, probably all of you have noticed, that something looks a little bit different. Uh, and so we have Billy... Um, the Billy Green, thank you, sorry, I couldn't remember your last name for a minute. Billy Green, the, the, uh, he's the professor for the theater department. He's going to come and tell you a little bit about what's going on over the next three days. Thank you. Good morning. So, yes, the, the stage looks a little different. We are currently finishing up the set, as you can see. Uh, still some some more things to be brought in, some more painting to be done, but we hope that you will all come and uh, encourage the cast and crew and enjoy this production. Uh, it is free for students. You do get uh, community life credit for coming to see that, so that is a plus. Tickets can be gotten online or at the box office right out the door. Um, this show was chosen before I even knew I was going to be here at Tabor, and many of these uh, people have been working on this show since the spring. So we're excited for you to see the talented cast, and as you see, the, this great set. Um, any cast and crew in the audience, please stand. No, wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't, don't applaud for standing up. Come see the show, and then let them earn your applause, and then applause after you see them. But thank you very much. <laughs> so I hope, I hope you'll come and see this, and, and keep an eye out. Um, probably 1st of November, there'll probably be uh, posters around campus for an open call, because uh, I'd like anybody that's not involved in the theater department, you don't have to be a major, maybe you did theater uh, before you came to Tabor in high school or somewhere else, uh, we will have an open audition. You can come and sing and do a monologue. You can come and do a monologue. You can just sing. But I'd, I'd like to see uh, what kind of talent that we have here, people that uh, may not have even thought about being in the theater when you came here to Tabor. But you have the opportunity, and I'd like to, to, to see what's here. So keep an eye out for those. And come in uh, one afternoon. You'll see it. And uh, come in. Uh, sing something, do a, do a monologue, and, um, and maybe get involved. So please come see this. Um, like I said, you get community life credit, and um, it's going to be a great production, and thank you. Thanks, Billy. Yeah, one of our core values here at Tabor is just involvement, and so this is another way that you have the opportunity to get involved. Uh, for those of you who maybe have had uh, theater per, um, theater. Uh, participation in the past and would like to do that again, uh, you have the opportunity to do that here. And so, um, yeah, come and check it out. So the, the play begins tonight, 7 o'clock. No, not tonight. The Wednesday. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 7 o'clock, 7.30, 7.30. There we go. We got all the information you need. Are you thoroughly confused? Probably, but that's all right. Go to tabor.edu slash tickets to get your free ticket for the play and help support them for all the hard work they've been putting into this. All right. We're going to transition now to um, our chapel time today. 
And today our speaker is Bob Sator. He is uh, a good friend of mine. We've been connected for many years. And uh, Bob is from Ghana originally. Uh, he came to... Uh, to the United States, to Denver, to go to seminary. Uh, once he finished seminary, he was sent back, and he was a, a missionary through SIM in Mozambique for many years. Uh, and then God called him back, and he is now a mobilizer. So he travels around, mobilizing others to go into mission to all the areas of the world. And so he is, um, he is here today, and I'm excited to have him share with you today. So would you please help me welcome my friend Bob Sator to come and share with us? Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Well, it's always a pleasure to be here and to talk about missions. And mission really is a privilege for us to partner with God in what he's doing in the world. You know, when my son was about three years old, any time that I wash the car. My son wants to wash the car with me. And as a father, I let him do it. But he was really not helping. <laughs> he was undoing what I was doing. But I allow him to do it all the same. So friends, you know, when I was having this experience with my son, it reminded me just how God wants us to partner with him in what he is doing. Hello? He wants us to partner with him in what he is doing in the world. Because, listen, God reconciled us to himself. And then he gave us that ministry of reconciliation that through you, others may come to know the Lord. And that must be very exciting. That who am I? Who are you? That God will find you fit to partner with him, to bring good news to those who need it. And so anytime I'm on campus to talk to young students like you, I am so excited because whatever you are studying here and whatever gift God has given you, you can use that in mission, either locally or internationally, to bring others to him. And... I am glad to be here today and to talk about our mission a little bit. And we look into the Word of God. SIM has been around for over 125, 27 years. It was founded in 1893. And the name stands for Sudan Interior Mission. And Sudan, not the country Sudan, but that part of Africa in the 1800s, south of the Sahara, from the west, from Senegal, all the way to Ethiopia, was inhabited by over 60 million people that needs to be reached with the gospel. And that is where SIM started its work. And that's how we got our name. And SIM is international, it is interdenominational. We work in 70 countries, and the missionaries and ministry workers come from more than 65 nationalities. So we are intentionally international in what we do. And you know, what we do around the world could be summed up in three statements. The first one is that we'll respond to need. Folks, there are so many needs in this world that must be responded to. It could be 
potable water. It could be developing a community. And as we go to respond to these needs, then it gives us the opportunity to proclaim the gospel. So we respond to need, and then we proclaim the gospel. And when the gospel is proclaimed in the power of the Holy Spirit, churches will be planted. And when churches are planted, we come alongside these churches and to equip them to be transformed and also transforming that they would multiply and reach out to others. So we respond to need, we proclaim the gospel, and we equip the church. Remember that. It's going to be on the quiz, okay? <laughs> and the conviction that drives what we do is this. And listen carefully. We are convinced that no one should live and die without hearing God's good news. And so we believe that God has called us as his people to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, especially in communities where he's least known. So there are many people in this world, they live, they die without hearing the gospel. And that should cause our hearts to hurt. And that should cause us, that should motivate us, that should energize us to take this good news to these who are living and dying without the gospel. And so we do our activities through short-term, mid-term, and long-term services. We also send out teams. And that depends on how long they are needed on the field. And we also have internship uh, opportunities. Let me just show you some of the literature that I have here on campus today. In fact, whatever you are studying, I said it, can be used in mission. Now come to think about it. Why would God gift you, give you some special gift? And why would God give you the mind to be able to study? And why would God bring you here into this institution for you to get a degree and that cannot be used to expand his kingdom? It doesn't add up, does it? And so all of you, whatever you are gifted to do, whatever you are studying, know that you can use that. You can give that back to God to be used in his ministry to help others to come to know him. And that is our partnership with God. And so SIM is a general mission organization, which means that we are involved in every conceivable, every imaginable ministry, Christian ministry. And so we have all this cards over there on the table, and please help yourself with them. Go pick up some of this in different disciplines in different areas, and they also have our um, link there, and you can connect us online and ask your questions. It doesn't mean that you are signing up for anything, but you want to ask more and to make some informed decisions. And there is this that is stop, consider, go. Many of you might be asking questions about how do I even start thinking about mission and what does it mean? The questions are raised in this booklet and the uh, answers are given. And this is about Islam, overview of Islam. We know that Islam is a force to reckon with. And the more we understand Islam and Muslims, the better we can reach out to them. SIM is a major medical mission organization. This booklet talks about our schools, I mean, our hospitals, 
and clinics in the world. And then you can learn more about it in the subsequent pages where the needs are. We are also involved in education. We have schools around the world. God might have brought you here to study, to teach. You can teach in any of our schools around the world. Last but not the least is our internship. So we have internship where you can go to work with other missionaries, and as you work with them, it's perhaps God would confirm whether that is what he has called you to do. So please, as you walk out from here, stop by the stand, let us have some conversation, pick up these materials, and let's see what God does. So all what I'm here to do is to expose to you this um, ministry opportunities and leave the results to God. Amen? Amen? And so as we come to the word of God at this time, I would pray and ask the Holy Spirit to, to direct our thoughts. Father, your people are gathered again and it's in your name. We pray that Holy Spirit, you come to speak and do so in your power and speak to us. Let us not just be hearers, but help us also to be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You see, folks, it is crucially important for us as believers of Christ to pause, to pause from time to time and to reflect over the Great Commission. Well, let me read from Scripture clearly what the Great uh, Commission is. Reading from the Bible so that you know that this is the Word of God. This is the Great Commission. And this commission is a command that God gave to his disciples and therefore to us after his resurrection. This is what Matthew records. It says from <clears throat> Matthew chapter 18, verse 16, he says, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, and, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, and this is the great commission. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is a command. And God's commands are non-negotiable. We cannot talk him out of his command. And so, all he wants us to do is to comply with his commands. And when we do that, it comes with tremendous blessing. You see, the more we bless others, the more we are blessed. It's just like the law of harvest. When you plant a seed, you do not harvest at the end of the season a seed of what you planted you get multiplication of that. And the more we are obedient to God and allow him to use us as tools in his hands to bring peace in the life of others, his peace is multiplied unto us and we receive his blessings. But we have to obey. We are his children and he wants us to obey. So the Great Commission is a command to the whole church, to take the whole gospel to the whole world. Amen? Amen? And how I pray that the Holy Spirit himself this morning would spare our hearts and encourage us to see the importance of this command 
and that we will come before him and say, Lord Jesus, here am I. Use me in any way that you find fit that others might come to know you. We pray the Holy Spirit will do that even right now and to bring this deep conviction in our hearts that we would be tools in his hands to the glory of his name. So it is, it is important for us to pass and to reflect over this commandment. But it is also important for us to think about the 3.8 billion people in the world today that are yet to be reached with the gospel. That should break our hearts. That people that many live without hope and God is counting on us to bring hope to them. And so, <clears throat> think about it. Think about people that do not know Christ. You see, those of us who are children of God, God saved us. He's given us his salvation. And he has given us new identity and position in Christ. So the identity is that we are justified. That is, we have been declared righteous. It doesn't matter how our sins were before we came to know the Lord. And when we trusted him as our Lord and Savior, he says that our sins have been washed away. We have been justified. He has declared us righteous. Amen? Amen. I wish this was an African church. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that we have been justified. We've been declared righteous. And we have direct access to the very presence of, of God himself. And now we can go to him in prayer. We don't need any high priest to lead us before our living God. That we can go. I hope this morning you spoke to God. You prayed. And therefore when you step out and someone told you that God is dead, you will tell him that no, I spoke to him this morning. He is alive. We have that direct access with God. I don't know what we can do without prayer. Because he invites us to come before his own presence because we are his children. And he says when we pray, he hears us. He says we shouldn't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, to bring our request before him. And he says the resource is that. He gives us peace that passes all understanding. And the people of God must say amen to this. Amen. That we have this direct access. You see, we have also been reconciled to him. Not only that, we have been redeemed. We have been transformed. Uh, we have been transferred from darkness into his marvelous light. So those are the identity and our position in Christ. We are sons and daughters of, of God himself. And God holds himself responsible for our well-being. And we must be excited about this. And because we are excited about this, because we are so much blessed, because we have a new identity in Christ, because we have a new position in Christ, then that should motivate us to become agents of God's salvation to others. Amen. That should motivate us that there are people there who are dying and they have no hope and we want to be God's hands towards them. And so the big idea for our discussion this morning the central truth with which I want you to leave this place and remember it. This is it. You see, the incredible salvation that we have received must motivate us 
to become agents of God's salvation to others. Are we together? So the incredible salvation that we have received must motivate us to become agents of God's salvation to others. I hope you are motivated this morning just to do that. Remember that. And so to that effect, you see, <clears throat> Paul teaches in Romans, Romans chapter 10 and from verse 12 to 15. In Romans 10, if I can find it, Romans 10, he has this to say. He, he is talking about the fact that God is no respecter of persons when it comes to salvation. And then he poses a number of questions thereafter. So Romans 10 and from verse 12, this is what Paul says. He says, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on his name. And verse 13 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. So folks, let me ask you, do you believe this? Do you believe that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, and if you believe it, why don't you allow yourself to be the conveyor belt? Huh? Why don't you allow yourself to be the instrument? Why don't you allow yourself to be the tool to convey this name to those that do not know him. It could be in your family. It could be in your neighborhood. It could be in your schools. It could be in your workplaces. Oh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would bring this conviction into our hearts again, that anyone who calls on your name will be saved, and that we will allow ourselves to be used as tools in your hands to bring this gospel to others. You see, a belief that does not translate into action become a misbelief. That means it's just an opinion. And if you really believe and that does not push you into action, then your belief is a misbelief. It is just an opinion. God's word is not just an opinion. It is a fact that those who believe in him will be saved. And so, young men, young women, allow yourselves <laughs> to be used to convey this truth to others so that your belief it's not just an opinion. And then Paul goes on to ask some pertinent questions, and I want us to engage that. And then in verse, verse 14, he says that, how then can they call on the one they have not believed? So people that do not know Christ, how can they call on the one that they have not believed? That is what Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is asking. How? And then he goes on to ask, and how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? They are miserable. How can they believe in the one in whom they have not heard? Follow the logic of Paul here. And he goes on and says, and how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And so we have the good news by his grace. 
and we can let others receive this good news. Huh? Amen. Perhaps just by our own lives, our personal lifestyle will tell others around you that you are the child of God. You live differently, and that sends a message. And apart from the personal lifestyle, we need to proclaim the gospel, the proclamation of the word, to know the essentials of the gospel and to share with our people. And as if this is not uh, enough, we can also use persuasion. That is easy. Persuasion is sharing your own personal testimony with others. You see, that is an experiential truth. Telling the people that I was like this. A time came, I met a man. His name is Jesus. He transformed my life. And then from now, I am a brand new person. Scripture says, those who are in Christ have become new creation. The old is past and the new has come. Share that truth with your friends, your colleagues, with your family members. And so, personal lifestyle, proclamation of the gospel, and persuasion would share the word of God with others. And so as I bring this message to a close, I would like you to remember, to remember the big idea of our discussion this morning, the central truth, and this is it, that the incredible salvation that we have received must motivate us to become agents of God's salvation to others. Well, maybe you are here and you, you, don't, you don't understand this salvation business. What is it? I know this is a Christian institution. And the fact that we are here doesn't mean that everybody knows it. The fact that you are born in a garage, you don't become a car. <laughs> and so maybe you are here and this salvation thing you don't understand. But the meaning of salvation is that we have eternal life. Okay? And scripture says that this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And that life is in his son. And anyone who has the son has life. Anyone who does not have the son of God does not have life. Let me demonstrate this to you. I have this um, dollar note. And I want to give this dollar note to you. So I put this dollar note in this Bible. And how are you going to get this dollar note? It is by receiving the Bible. And when you receive the Bible, you become richer. <laughs> you have the dollar notes when, when you receive this Bible. So God in his own wisdom has put eternal life in his son. And anyone who receives his son has eternal life. So when you receive the container you get the content, what the container contains. And so as heads about this morning, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is not too late. That you will pray this prayer after me, and there is no magic in this prayer. It is you Sincerely confessing your sins and inviting Christ 
into your life and you will receive eternal life and you become a child of God. So if that's your desire, please pray with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know I have been living my life apart from you and that is sin. Thank you for dying on the cross to forgive me all my sins. This morning, I invite you to come into my life to give me eternal life and to make me a child of God. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Now let me pray for you. Father, thank you for those who prayed this prayer today. May you continue to reveal yourself even to them and to draw them closer to you. Lord, and may they walk in your light and to bring glory unto your name. And Father, the rest of us, help us not just to be hearers of your word, but help us to become doers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.